the pain of every war veteran combined is nothing compared to the pain of a Sonic fan. Sonic fans really can't catch a break. Every good game is immediately overshadowed by a bad one. Heck, give it five years and a good game is going to be considered bad. People can never give up on the same few jokes about the series. The Twitter hates you. Big the Cat. But Sonic's a really fun series if you ignore its bad points. I actually love this world and its characters. If only there's a way to experience that, we we'll have here over Child. Well, it's a pretty good thing that Sonic, or any game series that isn't Pokemon, has massively expanded to any and all forms of the media they can. Books, comics, movies, and of course, animation. So join me as we take a spin through all of Sonic's animated works, from shows and TV shows to weird internet things. It's an obvious joke about weird internet things in Sonic. Movies and Knuckles show are primarily live action with just some 3D animated characters, so they're not here. Nor are the animated segments of the games like intros to Sonic CD and Mania. Let's see if I can say anything about Sonic. It hasn't said in like 50 other hour-long retrospectives. Here is a retrospective of every Sonic animation. So losing release order, which kind of sucks, since that means we have to start with the objective best one. I don't think Adventure of Sonic Hedgehog needs any introduction at this point. This very well could be the internet's second favorite show after Spongebob, with all the iconic memes it's made. You don't gotta be snooping as usual to see why it's so iconic. It's very much aimed at little, little kids. With his bright colors, passing as fast as Sonic himself, and of course, Sonic says. But it's just a very curious scene of him talking about people touching you. Or... Sonic here is worked by Julia White. Best known for the genie in DuckTales 2017, and I think he was some neighbor guy. Kale is voiced by some random five-year-old to get off the streets. And Robotnik and his minions are the peak of video game adaptations. Every single thing Robotnik says is just objectively peak comedy. A lot coming from his voice actor Long John Baldry's complete conviction to the role. His constant rolling of his R's and just everything. I just love this take on Robotnik so much. I mean, like, I have to. He's like the internet's unofficial mascot. But people overlook his minions. Scratch, Ground, and Coconuts also really help carry the show. I love they all just freaking hate each other. The voices should be annoying, but just inherently funny to me. And like Sonic, who just mostly just has the same stick every episode of ripping off Bugs Bunny and never getting any pushback, they and Robotnik get pushed through the ringer every episode. And I love Pain. It's a super simple kid show, but I can't see how anyone could possibly hate it. It's just so entertaining, ironically or otherwise. You also got a Christmas special where Sally, in her only appearance on the show, has Sonic get her a gift. So naturally, Robotnik takes over Santa's workshop, and then after Sonic beats him, Sonic is the only way to get all the presents delivered in one day. So for that, Sonic just becomes Santa. This is the final episode, and this is just his life now. Of course, you can't talk about that show, but discussing a sister show that came out a few days later, Sonic the Hedgehog. Or as everyone else calls it, Sonic Sally Am. Referring how to it got new episodes every Saturday morning. Unlike the last show, which did this, this show actually took itself pretty seriously. It even had an infinite story. I mean, it's definitely not as gritty as people make it out to be. It's got more than a fair share of the silly funny, but still, this was a shockingly big step in animation, taking itself much more seriously. And thankfully, the story and characters are still gripping enough to carry the show. Even though Sonic is still voiced by Julia White, Sonic thanks, Scott Pilgrim, he doesn't distract from the story. But instead, his more lighthearted performance gives an underlying sense of hope throughout the show. The show actually has an environmental message around it, which is notable for being the only thing for kids to have this and not be preachy. It helps that they do not pull their punches at all, especially for showing how bad Robotnik is here. Like the horrific robotization he performs to Sonic's uncle. The story is about the war between animals and Robotnik. And actually, yeah, let's just discuss Robotnik quickly. I don't understand how you could make the goofiest version of this man then immediately make another who's basically hit by This Robotnik is absolutely terrifying. A soft-spoken monster who unleashes the absolute worst upon the world, and actively nothing's played for laughs. It makes it really funny when you realize he's like Jim Cummings, since we need a poo who's blooming the world, roboticizing people, and who the king, who's voiced by TIM CURRY, WHAT THE fuck? This show really holds up. Even if it sucks that it ends on a cliffhanger, it did get more or less adapted in several comics though, but like, reading? What do I look like, a nerd? Now it's far from perfect, Season 2 in particular becomes a lot more goofy. Not in the fun way Avengers is. I hate this dragon. But I think the show being so short helps it in this case so it doesn't drag out. Oh, and this is the first appearance of Sally Acorn. People drop porn of her. There, I said, are you happy? I made the exact same joke everyone else makes. Actually, I found out she's voiced by Kate Sushi, who voices Lola in Space Jam. Does she know she basically invented furries? Anyways, uh, here's some weird malarkey. You see, this is how I make videos. So this is Sonic Super Hedgehog, a Russian quiz show made by Sega that asks several questions about Sega games. It has this just wonderful CG intro. This is just how every creepy pasta ends. Throughout the quiz, small animations of Sonic plays, including front-facing Sonic, Maxi Paralysis Demon. Okay, as weird as this is to find, there isn't much to these, but hey, they're a fun footnote. 
We then have what I thought was the first piece of Sonic animation. Thank God Google exists to correct me so I don't look like a buffoon in front of my entire legion of fans. Sonic the Animation, aka Man of the Year. This is played in some Sega theme parks. Before getting globally released, is an extra in the game Sonic Jam. It's set to the song Hollow Mountain King, and is about Robotnik furious that Sonic was declared Man of the Year. So he goes to ruin his reputation by dressing like him and messing with people. People who are apparently stupid enough to think that this and this look even remotely similar. Then everyone thinks Sonic. Thankfully, he said the story will continue. The story didn't continue. So, uh... Remember when Sonic had a band? Do we arrive at the worst thing here, objectively don't question me? Sonic Underground. The plot of this show is simple. Triplets born! The thrown away- Okay, nowadays, the show is only known for the theme song, and where the frick this scene is. In actuality, this is about Sonic reuniting with his lost brother and sister, and attempt to find their mother, and once again stop Robotnik. It's bad. Not without its enjoyable cheese, again the knuckle scene, but it's definitely low in totem pole shows. Sonic and his siblings have a band. Anyone who's ever insulted the songs in Donkey Kong Country Show, apologize right away. Jill White returns for the final time, while doing triple duty as Sonic, Manic, and Sonia. Sonic's great as always, he does a fine job differencing Manic, but Sonia. Sonia is rough. He doesn't do their singing voices though. Normally, Sonic singing is done by Sam Vincent, which means I'm allowed to say that these are all voiced by the same guy technically. Speaking of weird voice performances, Brian Junt voices Knuckles here. Not a bad choice in theory, but his performance is far too nasally. It sounds close to what you think for Sonic, or even Silver, than Knuckles. Also, Knuckles is here, but no tails. Robotic is fine here, but he's not as threatening as it said I am, or as entertaining as Adventures. We need him to just existing. He does have some minions in this though, Sleet and Dingo. Dingo has a crush on Sonya, who is presumably a teenager. Would you believe me if this wasn't the most uncomfortable relationship in the series? You're not gonna kiss me, are you? No way! But you are kinda cute. This show is bad, man. Definitely has some fun moments. But at that point, just watch Avengers. Sonic Underground! This leads just what's considered by many to be the magnum opus of Sonic animation, the Sonic OVA movie. I really didn't like this feeling as a kid, but as three kids in a trench coat pretending to be a 24 year old, I am mixed. This introduces Sarah. I hate Sarah. I really hate bratty kid characters, and that's her whole thing. Also, Robotnik trying to get with her, despite her being a teen and him being, well, not that. And Kel's groping her chest. Yeah, it's the way to go back to a Sonic product and remember these were there. We should have gotten rid of Sarah, just focus on Old Man Owl, the best Sonic character objectively. But dude, the middle Sonic stuff, that still goes hard as heck, man. The fights are great. And the ending of him sacrificing himself worked shockingly well emotionally. Plus, come on, how do you not love the I know everything you're gonna do line? The English dub is pretty cheesy overall, but it works in my opinion, to make an overall fun experience. Despite how much I want Sarah to fall in love with. Yeah, you should be. In the Star Wars video, I made a brief detour to discuss some cancelled Star Wars projects, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Except, there's actually several cancelled Sonic pieces, including Sonic the movie. Live action animated hybrid circle around 1994, and Sonic Wonders of the World, a film where Sonic jumps out of a game and joins forces with a kid to find chaos emeralds hidden in a rock in the real world. Which I won't discuss either, because if I ain't discussing the Paramount films, so these aren't making the cut either. The first one I will discuss is Super Sonic Sisters. That's an interesting name, I wonder what it inspired it. This is a potential spin off, either in its own universe or to Adventures of Sally Am, about Sonic's two sisters, Monica and Isabel who attend Mobius High School and run a bar and the school news. Robotnik's evil nephew, Obnotnik, attends the school too, and wishes to kill his sisters because he hates the reporting. Kind of weird to have the whole thing with Sonic sisters knowing a few years later Sonic will actually get a sister. It's a fine pitch, could be fun, I don't know. As you could tell from the wonderful visuals on screen, nothing visual from this was released. Our only proof of its existence is the pitch script. We also name drops a few potential episode titles. The other one I want to discuss is Sonic Armageddon. A film thought up by one Ken Penders. I don't really want to get into Penders because he didn't talk about the death, but if you had never heard of this guy, he was an artist and writer on the Sonic Archie comics, and is a known kind of scummy guy who managed to win a court case that rendered Sega unable to use several characters that it really should have owned. But let's start open to the video. What is open is his pitch. Dating back to around 2002. Not much is known about the plot, but it seems to be the standard thing of Sonic and some Peter fighters fighting against Eggman. A few pieces of content art made by Penders himself are pelvic, including this one of Sammy making Chuck E. Cheese. Rumor was this was pitched DreamWorks as the Sonic brand and them were under the same parent company at the time. But according to Penders, he only ever pitched this to Sega themselves. Taking your thoughts and can aside, this does seem like a really fun idea. Basically a more simplified version of the Archie comics. And holy fuck, Vector and SD on the big screen peak. But hey, it wasn't meant to be, sadly. 
So while I did watch everything mentioned here as a kid, besides the weird Russian thingy, I don't know what the frick that is, they weren't truly my Sonic. What was that for me was Sonic X, my second ever anime. I adored this show as a kid. I love seeing all the Sonic characters interact now in the real world. Now that I'm older, well, it's complicated. The story is a reverse Isekai, or as I call it, Smurfs, where all the cool magic characters go from the cool magic world into the real world. US, of course. Even a Japanese show must fit on there. Thank God it's not New York, though. They are slightly pushing the envelope. From there, Sonic tried to stop the plots A Man and reunite all of his friends alongside his new human friend, Chris Thorndike. Yeah, we should just immediately discuss Chris, shouldn't we? With this show falling by the wayside, it's pretty easy to forget how much everyone hated Chris back in the day. He was a whiny child, which was a lot of the attention from the OG cast, Sonic included. His entire relationship with his parents is weird too. Since I've constantly said how upset he is, they're always busy with their jobs. But the show shows they only do it to support him and give him everything he wants. Plus, it's not alone, it's got his grandpa who's literally Rick Sanchez Rick and Morty, who's both his surrogate father and a master inventor. Also, he's 55. His son is 43. Nelson was born when Chuck was only 12. But I'm fine with Chris, honestly. Most of these things to season three, but we'll get to that later. The other Sonic characters, they're mixed. I like the cool, laid back, you're still carrying cake on Sonic. Tails, Cream, Big Enough Brothers are mostly the same. I love the chaotic so much. There's a lot of place here, but they're just so funny. I had a great. A lot of the fenderization of the characters started here. Amy getting more obsessive and gone ray, Cheryl being more edgy and broody, and Knuckles becoming a big idiot dummy. With that said, that's just the start of these. We also pretty fine here, I'm gonna get stretched out far more later. Knuckles in particular is still a lot of fun, despite that. A lot of this comes from his voice performance, which, oh yeah, uh, I should bring that up. This was the first time all these voice actors voiced these characters, and became the main actor for them for a good few years. Despite the really awkward direction at some points, because, you know, four kids. These are really good voices for them all. And what I think of personally for most of their voices. Overall, the first two seasons, I like it fine enough. Maybe it's nostalgia. But I think the Sonic stuff is just fun enough, despite the kind of lame stuff with Chris. Even then, there's still good stuff with the kids, like this really nice scene with Sonic showing this kid in a wheelchair around town. And Chuck is funny, as are the other members of the Thorn Dyke household. Or the Uncanny on Estrogen, who is fun to ground the series. She's also the only reason I see people discuss the show anymore, is people ship her with Rouge. Oh, I see how it is. When Sonic kissed a human, it's the worst thing the franchise has ever done. But this is fine, simps. But the third season, I'll defend this till I die. It's finally gave us what you want. Back in Sonic's world, big new grand villains. Cosmo is a new big character, and she's really nice, and also capable of throwing hands. It has a big twist of being an unintentional spy. Even if her name kind of throws me. The one scene was Dark Sonic, that's completely arbitrary, but it held a chokehold on a Sonic family for a decade. I already love season three. The show itself is very much a mixed bag, but I'll admit, I'll always hold it dear. Well, there's a theme song. Like, have you heard this? It's the best Sonic theme song ever made. Don't at me. Night of the Werehog is a tie-in short to the game Sonic Unleashed. But Sonic and Chip entering a haunted house where Sonic, maybe as a werehog, needs to fight off some ghosts. A simple premise, but a really good looking short. Like, my god, this is 15 years old, but still looks great. Like, those mud prints? Top tier. There is no real dialogue, just cares making various noises. But it works and is really endearing. Always as endearing as the first appearance of Sands. The main plot is about Strip and Fat Stuff and Casper taking pictures of scare people. Mostly Chip and his recycled models from Monster House. Until eventually, Sonic has a realistic panic attack, sees a Smash logo, and dogs the frick out of them with, with the Werehog. The reason the ghosts are taking these pictures, by the way, is that they're massive simps for this ghost girl who likes pictures of people scared. And they're not the only simps for her, because people love to mock her horny people are for Sonic and Shadow, yet are perfectly fine having literally only one joke about quite literally any female Sonic character. Just aside, this is a really cute and well animated short. And we're justifying the Werehog, actually, honestly. Oh boy, Sonic Boom. There's just so much around the show I have to address. First of all, when the show was first revealed, people hated it. I mean, it was peak Sonic was never good era, so we had that strike against it. But then we got these character designs. Yeah, it was a big change. But this was a spinoff, so it's fine for differentiating the characters. Heck, I think Sonic looks better with blue arms. Yeah, I said it. Why does every other character have the same arm color as their main body but him? That was what you can use to, but these are fine designs for a spinoff. Also, this was around the same time Ike and Stopper got buff redesigns, so 2014 was really the year for the soul. What was hard to forgive was a game released around the same time. Okay, no one cares about the 3DS duology. Let's address Rise of Lyric. Yes, this game is bad. I do really think people exaggerate how bad it is, though. Mostly because this was the era of Sonic was always bad and evil versions of YouTubers forcing them to play Sonic 06. It's not made by the main Sonic team, it's made by a smaller, newer company. And it's technically a tie in game. If this was the exact same game starring Spongebob, no one would care. 
The game did a lot to kneecap the show, with many writing it off. Myself included. I'm gonna be real, I did not watch the show until I had to make this video. I was very much well aware of it, though. Despite the rocky start, the show certainly made a name for itself. But what you know it for is not season one. I actually like season one, a lot more low key than what you would know from the show, but it still has a fun action and all that. Other than the dynamics the main cast has, the more jerkish and aggressive tone everyone has is really funny. Lovos being a big dummy did stabby nail in the coffin of him being dumped constantly for a decade. But in the context of this show alone, I think it's funny. Nyx is also a fun addition with her conspiracy theory nonsense, and Nick of did give her a really fun energy, even if I can't unhear Chum Chum. She also fits perfectly with the main cast design wise, unlike literally any background character, who just looks so off. They all look like characters designed by someone who knows nothing about Sonic, or at best, look like maybe for the uncanny character creator in Sonic Frontiers. Season 2 is like 99% what you know of the show for. They have to kick up amounts of meta jokes, which is easily what the show is most known for. Honestly, I'm not super into them. Wow, the Sonic show made the exact same joke about how weird and creepy the fandom is, and how Sonic has gone downhill that overused even back then? How revolutionary! We all praise Sonic and Wendy's Twitter for being in a meme culture, and now you're somehow shocked we got this. Despite that, the non-meta jokes are even funnier here than season one, especially since they focus more on Eggman, objectively the best character in the show. What am I supposed to cover with that? Are you making fun of me? With that said, this is the first time Vector people are trying Espio, which set up the two basically being written out of the series. You! Well, I am tired of people only posting the same three clips online. This is still a really fun show. Definitely did not deserve his bad treatment. Despite coming out in the 90s, Half of this video covers only things that came out this decade, and the first of those is Mania Adventures. These are a series of shorts focused on Sonic and Mania, of course. Setting up the plot. Those are just so freaking good, man. I love these so much. But there's very short little bits setting up Sonic and his friends against Amy and Metal, with them all trying to get the Chaos Emeralds. They all have really great expressive animation for all these characters. It's just so expressive, especially Amy and Zoopy's little dance. The animation is 2D. There's a lot of really nice looking special effects that I'm pretty sure of CG. There's no dialogue, only music and sound effects from the games. But they're just so fun, man. Just watch these, they're all on YouTube. They made me realize how much I love Metal Sonic. These are all just so goofy, but he's genuinely super menacing. Despite the expressive characters, him being so static really helps him seem so much more intimidating. I just feel Christmas special that's all about him, that made him a depressed, sad sack loser, but he's still such a little guy. You know what to say about these? They're just really freaking good, man. <laughs> Racing Overdrive is basically just more of that. It's a different art style, but mostly still 2D with some 3D visuals. It's got everything you could want. Shadow committing a vehicular manslaughter, Omega teaching us to not use your phone while driving, some gosh dang respect on Big's name, the face and dance anime make the only reason people know these shorts, Taylor's Mario the Martian look and walk. Yeah, these are all very really fun. Definitely better than the game is based on. On the first Cartoon Respective video, I had two bonus segments. One is for cancelled stuff, and the other is for a cartoon crossover. It is the same here. I have very specific qualifications to make one of these retrospectives. Okay, KO is a show discussed quite a bit on this channel. One thing that made us stand out is video game references. It's usually pretty subtle, but they're everywhere. The show also has a ton of crossovers. Shocking for a fairly forgotten short lived show. And I am planning on making a video on CN crossovers. The biggest one, though, besides this one with every CN show, is Let's Meet Sonic. I'm assuming this came to be since one, Boom was airing around this time, and two, Sega will literally cross over with anything. As much as I love this show, I am mixed on it. On one hand, I don't like Sonic's personality here. He's way too jerkish. It isn't something I associate with him. Hitting children, ignoring tales, or thinking about himself, that is very much not Sonic. And it just feels wrong. He does get better at the end when he saves KO and talks to Tails, but for the majority of the episode, he's not Sonic. With that said, the KO side of things are still great. The humor is on point, and expressions are so great and zany. The other thing it has going for it, the references. For an 11 minute episode, they cram so many references to Sonic. The most aren't super distracting, actually. Basically, if you know it, it's funny, but if, if not, it still works. Finally, while well, a few nods to the games, most of it is references to the various shows. There's a Sonic Says segment, a reference to Mel Sonic's death, various catchphrases from the shows, not to mentioning his romance with Eggman, being a nod to Jim Cummings voicing both, and while the game song starts with like five different parts, it then transitions into Hall of Mountain King, which might be a nod of Man of the Year. It's a really fun crossover for both sides. But like crossover Nexus, I do wish this was a 22 minute episode instead of an 11 minute one. Also, Mario apparently gets a nod too, since he's drawn at one point. In the same scene, KO calls the Olympics a summer winter for sports games because the Olympics are trademarked. Turns out there is a copyright law in the universe that can stop him. 
Chow in Space is a very short yet very cute animation of Sonic watching a Chow in the Chow Gardens who's daydreaming about being a spider pilot a la Star Wars. Again, super short, yet really cute. I think the ending heavily implies that a Chow ripped off Sonic's nose and he bleeds to death. <laughs> also, there's a penguin! <laughs> Around the World in 80 Seconds is a bonus feature on the Sonic movie DVD of uh, Sonic going to every major place on Earth quickly. It's done in a notebook sketchy style and it's supposed to be drawn by Sonic. Either because he's a kid in those movies, or because Sonic is a huge Whoopi Kid fan. Why is Pizza Rat so referenced in a movie five years after it happened? The freaking Ruby Bear movie came out the same year and had him too. Was it really that funny, guys? Also, I saw this and had one. Sonic, Sonic Colors is a game that means a lot to me. So I'm so happy I got a remake. The remake sucked, but hey, at least we got Rise of Whips out of it. This is about Metal Sonic, collecting various whips, and Sonic is trying to stop him. I really like this characterization of Sonic. He's a bit sarcastic, but when the moment needs it, he'll always jump on me to do the right thing. A robot and Keybot are funny, and I will not hear otherwise. They reference the dumb rankings the game have, so that's a win in my books. Metal Loader is really great. This video really convinced me he's my second favorite Sonic character. He's always so intimidating, with him never speaking, and still being able to strike fear into Sonic in the wrists. But he can still get a few good jokes. He's cool! It's a really fun short, and again, better than the game. Tube is a series on Sonic's official YouTube channel that features tales of YouTuber, interviewing various characters across the series on various topics. The show is actually a ton of fun. It explains Sonic lore in a really fun way. I used to scroll through fan wikis for hours. And this is that, but with VTubers. So it's bad, but it's really cute. Tails is constant fanboying, every con thing from a Sonic character. Just the entire Christmas episode. Despite some janky models, like these guys are all together in the same room while they're looking directly at the camera, it's not enough to distract from what's a really fun look at the series. Just shout out to how Knuckles is portrayed, being far closer to his classic historic word material rather than the loud mouse hothead he's usually nowadays. I think it actually balances out how to include his more comedic quirks. Also being that stoic protector, giving another reason this series is so much fun. Destroying robots brings me joy. It should bring you joy as well. Yeah, but I have robot friends too, you know? Disgusting. You should tell me where they live. As I said, I am not discussing the live action movies or the Knuckle Show, and that is mostly based off live action. Thumbnail is a clickbait though, because I'm talking about a part of the live action verse Drone Home. A show that came out with a DVD for the sequel. It's about Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles walking around as they come across a dump where one of Eggman's drones is hiding and slowly improving himself. It's not the same really cute rating the films have. You won't get a lot of this dynamic in the movies, so I appreciate seeing it here. The Drone 2 is really cool. I love his design and all the mismatched parts are held together by a car. I love to see this in a boss in the actual game. It's a cute and simple short, but one thing does confuse me. The casting. Ben Schwartz is back as Sonic, but he replaced Idris Elba as Knuckles with Fred Casticor. That actually makes sense. Speedy and Subbies do tend to be too expensive or busy for side projects. Look at, say, Puss and Do 2 short on the DVD that replaced Antonio Banderas. So don't have a problem with that. Plus he does a good job. A really weird one is actually Picard's Tales. Like, Colleen O'Shanti isn't a big name, definitely less than Ben Schwartz. And she's tales in the games on their media, so I like genuinely have no idea why they stopped her. Doesn't make the short bad or anything. Also, on the topic of tales, he looks pudgier than normal here, and I want to hug him so badly. Just a bit weird. <laughs> Sonic Frontiers Prologue Divergence is a short animation detailing Knuckles' daily life on Angel Island. And also a lot of Chow, I love Chow, they are silly. Eventually, Sonic gets Samurai Jack to a new location, fights some robots, Sage looks at him and suddenly bubble. Yeah, it's an explanation of why he's trapped in Frontiers, but I like it. The animation is breathtaking, and I really appreciate some of the more recent games really trying to fix the early 2010s fanization of him being a big dumb meatbag. It's really great little short that gives so much need love to the one who doesn't chuckle. That's just how I like it. I don't need anyone else to get by. And of course, we had to get to Sonic Prime, the newest full-length animated Sonic show. Sorry, Knuckles Bros. This one has really been controversial in the fandom, with several ups and downs. But besides reviving the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse fandom, what's it about? Well, it stars Sonic, of course, who accidentally gets thrown across the multiverse and needs to set things right. This is actually canon to the main games, unlike the other full series, and that's a detriment, especially since this is about the multiverse, infinite possibilities, tons of Sonic characters they can pull from. Sonic goes to like three roles across this whole show, all introduced in the first season, and they're all the exact same five characters. God, remember the chaos? They were so cool. I do like fully making Rouge and Big part of the main cast, though. Especially Rouge, she's shown just hanging upside down like a real bath, and that's adorable. But the worlds they go to are cool, but really underexplored. The cast is also notable, especially since this is a Canadian production. And because of the rules over there, they can't use their normal voices. So they're all recasted with Canadian voice actors. All do a good job, including Brian Drummond returning after two decades. This time it was Eggman. With that said, it's really funny almost every actor here was previously on My Little Pony. Oh, and I brought up Eggman. 
Bro's barely in the show, getting frozen in time with Sonic's friends as he gets small through mayhem. It's better replaced by the Chaos Council. I hate them. There are different versions of Eggman who are all different ages. They all have one joke they say over and over. They say you can't make omelets without baking a few eggs. And breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I want to eat a toddler. Well, that said, in New York City is a great pun. Actually, yeah, there is good here. The animation is really good for a TV show. I do like the different takes on Sonic characters, albeit I wish there was more, and Shadow is easily the best he's ever been here. He's finally shifted to being a true hero, but he's still very cynical, but in always thinking of a bigger picture, unlike Sonic who wants to help everyone. He actually reminds me a lot of the version from Mario Bros. Z, to anyone who remembers that. In all honesty, I do quite like the first two seasons. I like being introduced to these new worlds and takes on characters, but then season three happened. Nine, a Tales variant, it suddenly becomes evil. And Sonic keeps trying to convince him to not be evil and that he's his friend, but Tails just keeps saying, shut up, I'll kill you. And then there's a giant freaking kaiju Eggman who shoots lasers out of his mouth. And of course, the so retro scene. The sprites are class worse than the early Death Battle episodes. Good start, not good end. But honestly, I thought it was fine enough. Some ups, some downs, but I do think the highs were higher. And I mean, Big was a major character, so yeah, peak. But seriously, enough of the jokes about it being for toddlers. Sonic is clearly not a series made for babies. Oh. So this is Sonic and Friends, a series of shorts on TikTok made for young kids. They're just basic junk foody and pretty standard jingly key kid show stuff. That's it. It seems like with every new Sonic game that comes out, you're gonna get a new short alongside it. I'm perfectly fine with that though, as they're all very well done, and usually the underground can be the game itself. Trio Trouble is the most recent of these. Sadly, it doesn't have the same comedy as Mania Adventures or Raising Overdrive, but it's still epic. It starts with a really fun fight between the Sonic team and Fang, and even these horrific faces that remind me of that one scene of Sonic X. Then Fang meets up with Eggman and Trip, who, like, I like her, but god, her original design is so much better. Why do they keep this with another reptile design and give us yet another furry? Then the villains find a big mural and fight a snake. Why it have to be snakes? I'm not sure, but it's fun, I like it. And we're ending with the most recent as of writing, Ghost Tale. I know nothing about this short going into it. I was just surprised in Sonic Wiki and I saw this was the last thing there. Colored me surprised when I started and I was greeted with the Ghost Trio from Night of the Werehog. In fact, this is the only thing here to not feature Sonic himself or any other characters from the game, just the Ghost Trio and these new Ghost Babies. Did they frick? It's a cute short, but wow. These two ghosts are the definition of simps. Everyone apologize to Mordecai right now. We never see Chip in this short, so I'm just gonna assume he's still trapped in his rotting corpse. <laughs> <laughs> and that was every Sonic animation. What we learned from this? Well, I know this will actually rock all of your worlds. You never heard this before. Sonic had, had a lot of ups and downs. Just like his games, while he's got a lot of really, really great stuff in animation, he also got Sonic Underground. Still, I think Sonic's legacy has definitely gotten better. He's gotten a lot more good material recently, and you can now say you genuinely like Sonic without being called a furry or a slur. I grew up with a lot of these, and I'm glad they still hold up pretty well. One thing that does disappoint me though, both about these and just Sonic as a whole, is how little of the cast the more modern ones include. Look back at Sonic X. They had Team Chaotix, Cream, Chaos, Gamma, all these characters that Sega never acknowledges anymore. Let's not even mention characters made after that, like Blaze, Silver, and Omega. It's only the same, like, 10 or so. Never forget what they took from you. Still, one thing you can't call Sonic is boring. He's always changing things up, so I'm always looking forward to whatever he speeds into. Alright, fine, I'll say it. Sonic had a rough transition to 3D.